Welcome back to Starting Out Solitary for 2019. I'm Willow. This week we are on week 198 and the topic is sacred texts and what do they mean to me personally. For me, sacred texts are texts that are orientated around spiritual practices and religious beliefs. And so, for example, within the five major religions, we have, just to name a few from the top of my head, and in no particular order, uh, the Bible, the Quran, the Sutras, the Vedas, for example. And I guess all of those are the identity of those religious beliefs. It is about how we treat others, how we treat ourselves. And I guess another way to describe it is, um, you know, that connection between us here on the earthly realm and the greater source, you know, let's just say. For me, I've read the Bible in its entirety. There are certain aspects that I can connect to, that I can relate to, other aspects I don't relate to. And then there is the other parts where I guess it comes down to personal inter interpretation, um, maybe perhaps me not quite understanding it or what have you. But for me, anything can be a sacred text. And that can vary from, for example, a book of poetry or a poem that someone has written to a post that someone has written on Facebook to, um, you know, a book or a novel it can have that, that, you know, that, that connection, I guess that personal connection where I can find influential and I can see the the underlying message, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. For me, the most sacred books that I have or the texts that, that I have in my possession currently, I consider to be are my books of shadows and my journals because in there I write about my personal life's journey. I also write about, you know, my spells and my magical workings and that connection with everything around me, that connection with my inner self, my higher self um, and the greater source, for example. There's also, um, you know, synchronicities that are right in there and messages that appear through nature. For me, they are my, my strongest sacred texts. But having said that, I feel that it doesn't matter the age of a sacred text. Uh, for example, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the Bible, the Quran, um, you know, or the sutras or what have you. But rather, I guess, the, the influence, I guess, and the personal connection uh, that makes it sacred and depending on what it is is the level of sacredness so having said all of that um, and funnily enough this week's topic actually reminded me about two books that I that I purchased probably about six years ago and I remember growing up um, you know being of the Christian background my mum would always say a little prayer to help us or to protect to protect us you know while we're sleeping and so when I had my little ones I wanted to when I felt pregnant with with Jesse the first child uh, I wanted to introduce that, but because I couldn't quite connect with what, you know, what my mum was saying at that time, I wanted to create my own, you know, my own little prayer, I guess. Um, and for me, it's just a personal thing. I like to look for inspiration. And I stumbled across these two books and they kind of go hand in hand. So the first book that I purchased in order to help me uh, with that is a book of pagan prayer. And in there, oh, I consider this, for example, to be a sacred text. Now, certain parts of it or certain words of it I may not connect with, but, you know, because it's for personal use, you know, I've changed it up. Something that I can relate to and connect to it more personally that I find sacred. So this, to a varying degree, is sacred. Um, and in here, for example, it's a great little book. It has inspired me. It's, and I'm going to read the, the contents so that you get a rough idea. So it's got, you know, for example, part one, why and how we pray. Uh, in chapter one, the role of prayer. Uh, there's prayers for yesterday and today, ancient pagan prayers, pagan prayers and offerings. Why do we pray? Why do we make offerings? Um, and that's just to name just a couple of, uh, a few topics in chapter one. Then there's chapter two, the basics of prayer. Prayer through words, prayer through posture, prayer through motion, prayer through dance. Uh, the list goes on. Then in chapter three, preparing for prayer, acts of purification, creating a sacred space, sacred flame. Um, and then chapter four, uh, composing prayers, identifying your gods, definition, uh, defining deities through their myths. So it's quite a little bit of a, there's a lot of um, information in this book and I consider this to be sacred to a degree. Then after I discovered that book, 
then of course there was a pagan ritual prayer book and I thought okay well this kind of goes hand in hand so I obviously, obviously I purchased this one and I kind of the same way and it's written by multiple authors as well so we've got for example part one the foundations of worship you've got chapter one prayer again poetic structure um, meter and rhyme poetic style then there's chapter two ritual then there's part two building rituals so chapter three beginnings um, chapter four the home chapter five callings chapter six praise so there's a lot of um in, even here chapter nine for example times of the day so there's examples of different little rituals and prayers that you have for times of the day for certain times of the year as well and although 100 percent all of it um i don't connect with it in its entirety but most certainly i can you know rejig it i find it very influential for me so therefore this is another sacred text and there you have it. I was just about to mention Nick, my husband, and he happened to call me on my mobile. So when I first met Nick, uh, a little under 20 years ago, I think, he happened to have these two little books on his on his bookshelf. And I remember, I remember reading them and I went, these are fantastic. So I also have kept these and I classify these as sacred texts. And that's the second one in there. And there's quotes. I believe this is from the... Buddhism belief I can't remember but anyway I do flick through this um, you know from time to time and I take from it you know certain quotes I guess it is that can help me with whatever it is that I need help with depending on what the situation is so just for as an example I've opened up one randomly words of praise are like flowers whose aroma soothes people a helping hand is like the sun in a cold winter which provides warmth at the right time confidence is like a fairy which sails through rough winds and waves hope is like a full moon which is so bright and beautiful you know and there are so many there are so many little different ones throughout this book and i use these from time to time they ask i consider them to be sacred texts not everyone will agree with me and that's okay Here's another one, Mindful Wisdom, Heartful Joy. Uh, again, I'm going to pick one randomly. Comprehend pleasure through humbleness. Cultivate virtue through endurance. Conquer desire through self-control. Stabilize the body and mind with tranquility, for example. Another one, I feel called to do another one. Benefit comes from disadvantages. Be honest towards others. Leave no worries in the mind. Always praise others. So for me, these sorts of things I consider to be sacred. So pretty much that's all my thoughts on sacred texts. Until next week, I'm sending you so much love and blessings.